Welcome back to Smart Life. Today we are examining the question, are we really taking care of our veterans? We lose hundreds of World War II veterans every day now, and many of them never get to visit the memorial that honors them in Washington, D.C. But there is an organization that is trying to get as many World War II veterans as they can to D.C. to see the World War II Memorial. This is certainly something they deserve. Dave Smith is the chairman of Honor Flight San Diego and Monty Monterano, I said it, the Honor Flight San Diego ambassador and World War II veteran. Welcome to Smart Life. And Monty, of course, thank you, thank you so much for your service. Um, I, I was telling you a little bit earlier, Dave, that I... Um, I, I, when I hear the music playing and I'm walking through the airport, and it seems to happen all the time. You guys are always on this, especially in San Diego. Um, it, it, it brings a tear to my eye. I always want to stop and thank the veterans. It usually means I've missed my flight, but if I make my flight, I'm soggy and my eyes are red. Um, this is such a special mission. Why do you do it? Well, um, I get asked that quite often. And if you just take a moment and think about all the wonderful things we have in this life, uh, in this world here mm -hmm. in San Diego, in the United States, uh, from the freedoms that we now uh, have. And if you look at World War II, there was no time in our recent history that we were uh, ever closer to losing those freedoms. Mm -hmm. And this is just our way of saying thank you uh, to our veterans for those services and maintaining those freedoms we yeah. all enjoy. That's really cool. Um, Monty, tell me, what is, what is it that you wish America knew that they don't seem to understand about our World War II veterans and our military in general? Well, I think that uh, with thank Honor Flight for bringing us out of our sleep mm. because now more veterans are being recognized. And I always say to the, I go to the high school classes in Rancho Panacea's and Mount Carmel, I, it's a, a history classes, and I said, when you do see a World War II veteran, go up and thank them for what's going on because you got to realize freedom did not come free. I was 18 years old when I went in, yeah. just a kid. I, the only guns I ever played with was cap pistols hmm. till they gave me a rifle. It was fight to the death is what it was yeah. for all of, of, of us veterans. And I was very fortunate to come out of it the way I did. Yeah, tell us a little bit about your tour. Well, it landed in uh, <clears throat> Glasgow, Scotland. Went over on the Queen Elizabeth. There was 14,000 of us on there. We stayed two weeks there. Then we went down through England and lived in the England. We boarded the... Uh, Across the channel, I was with the 7th Army, 5th Infantry Division, 3051 Quarter Salvage and Collecting Quartermaster Outfit, and we landed on uh, Omaha Beach, uh, between Utah and Omaha Beach, but that was September of 44, and then we went all the way through France, Germany, and ended up in Salzburg, Austria, and we got caught in the Battle of the Balls where everybody became infantry, mm -hmm. fixed bayonets and go out and be shot or, or killed or be killed, but anyway, uh, and then I served about a year over there and got out in 1946 when I got out of the service. Dave, what is your favorite story of all the times, all the honor flights you've had? You have to have, you must want to tell me 50 stories well, there, right now, but you have to pick your there's favorite. There's hundreds and hundreds of stories yeah. that, uh, that have taken place in there. And uh, each trip, there's something new that just amazes us of what some of, the, uh, some of these veterans had gone through. We did have one touching story a few years back. Uh, there was a, uh, a World War II veteran, uh, Howard Harvey, uh, who served in the 10th Mountain Division, the same division that uh, Senator Dole served in. And we knew that he uh, was having some uh, heart failure difficulty, so we moved him up the list and got him on the list. Uh, we took his brother as well. They were both uh, uh, veterans, and we made it to the World War II Memorial. Bob and Elizabeth Dole uh, come to uh, the World War II Memorial as often as they can. They've been there about 138 times mm -hmm. now to greet our veterans. Well, anyway, Howard had the opportunity to meet uh, mm -hmm. Senator Dole, and they spent quite a bit of time together. Uh, Howard, I mentioned, was having heart failure. Uh, he made it back to San Diego. He went to see his doctor on a Tuesday, and he passed away on a Thursday. Oh. I went to his memorial, and uh, the entire family came up and said, <laughs> thank you, thank you, thank you for uh, including him on honor flight. Mm -hmm. He actually lived for too much long, two months longer because of the opportunity to go on this flight. His brother said he was bound and determined he was going to make, make this flight. It gave him something to live for, and literally. Gave him something to live for. So oh. that's a very touching story. That is yeah. a very touching story, and I can see you start to tear up, and me too, mm -hmm. as we're talking about it. But that's what this is all about, because uh, these guys need to know that uh, this country appreciates their acts of service, and I think that our our young military need to understand too that. We're not going to forget them. And then there's Benghazi. 
Um, Mani, I just want to ask you to reflect on Benghazi. What, what is your message to the people who, um, who are just kind of sweeping this under the rug? Well, to be honest with you, I don't believe in these wars, so-called wars that's going on. Uh, World War II, we went out there to save the world. Mm. But I don't know what we're saving now. Mm. I really don't know. I don't understand what's going on. Mm. I feel bad for these 19 and 20-year-old kids that are getting killed over there. For what? Mm. That's my feeling about it. And I'm, I know I've talked to a lot of World War II veterans that feel exactly the same way I feel. You went uh, to the, you, you have a friend, I think, who was there when the memorial was blocked from the veterans. Do you Correct. want to tell us that yes. story? As a matter of fact, one of our sister hubs, we were doing uh, some preparation work because we were scheduled to go within that time frame. And fortunately, it opened up uh, before we made it back there. But one of the, our sister hubs in Las Vegas was there uh, when the hub, or the, the uh, yellow tape was still around the memorial and uh, they did have permission to get in however they did cut up pieces of that tape one of the World War II veterans was so moved by his experience there he wanted to go donate to the uh, Las Vegas hub so he went into the office uh, to give them a donation and as he was pulling out his donation this little slip of plastic yellow tape came out the of his wallet tape. the caution yeah. tape and uh, uh, he said oh, oh yep I got that when I was at the World War II memorial and that piece of tape is going to stay in my wallet till the day I die. I bet. Yeah. But uh, 16 million served in World War II. It was one of the best teams that was ever uh, put together. 16 million served, uh, countless more at home. 448,000 died in World War II. <laughs> and again, this is just our effort to uh, say thank you for the efforts uh, of all of those, mm -hmm. particularly the fallen. Yeah, absolutely. Um, Monty, how does that make you feel that you that your 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 friends who went there with honor flights uh, were blocked from seeing their own memorial because of the government and their sequester? I couldn't believe that. I think the president should have gone right over there and cut the ribbon and says, come on, guys, we fought in Normandy, we fought the Battle of the Balls, we freed the world from a mastermind. This Hitler was really... I don't know if you've seen this on the Discovery Channel about three years ago. The wife and I were watching TV, and they brought up the map of the United States, how he was going to separate it if he had won the war. The, mm -hmm. the, the north, the central, and the eastern states were going to be German under the Nazi regime. Mm -hmm. The southern states were going to be under the Italians, and the western states were being under Japan. Mm -hmm. You stop and think about that. What we went through to stop that. Yeah. And that's my feeling about that. But they, wasn't it the labor unions they did let in that day, but they wouldn't let the veterans in the memorial? In, 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 in Washington, D.C., mm -hmm. yeah. I, and uh, this congressman that went up there and said that these, these people fought the Battle of the Balls, they fought the Storm of the Beaches of Normandy, and, uh, and he would jeem in that. Let's cut it. And he did cut the ribbon. That guy, take my hat off to him for mm -hmm. doing that. Yeah. Even yeah. though I wasn't there, but it, it made me feel good. Yeah, it as it should. Um, what, what do you think is, is the state of our military today? Do you think we're in big trouble? Uh, it's frightening to me to see it downsizing and downsizing at this point in time. Uh, actually, there are t deterrents because of strength, and I think that uh, that is something we definitely need to look at. So it does concern me. I work with a lot of the uh, World War II uh, veterans. We also have a lot of active duty that support us and help us out when we're doing these different events here. And I see these folks that are going into harm's way, and uh, I do not want to see them uh, undermanned or uh, underarmed when they have to go. Thank you for the important work you do, Dave. Thank you so much for being on the show today and, for, of course, for your service, Monty. Okay. We won't forget.